Welcome to the Breathing God podcast. I'm your host, Gretchen Rodriguez. I'm going to read the prophetic word that I posted on social media last week, and then I'm going to expand on it just a little bit more because God's put some more in my heart to share with you regarding it. So here's the prophetic word for those of you um, who haven't seen it. And if you have, here's just a reminder. The other day I saw the Lord holding an eraser and he was erasing the boundary lines that we've inadvertently drawn regarding, you know, what we think he can and can't do. And in response to what he was doing, I saw a standing with our mouths hanging open in surprise, just a look of joy and I mean, you know, celebration and praise on our lips. And I want you to know that God is about to wow us and do things that we've wanted to believe he'd do, but we were scared to fully believe because we didn't want to be disappointed. Can anybody relate to that? The blessings and surprises that are coming are going to literally erase the boundary lines of our faith. We're about to rise to a new level of faith because of what he's about to do. I know that many of us um, are facing huge obstacles, but I saw God just kicking them down and rushing, rushing to our aid. I mean, isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? He's erasing the boundary lines of our faith. That's huge, you guys. I remember about 10 years ago when The Lord was really challenging my faith and he asked me to believe for something. And I responded in honesty and humility, Lord, I know you can do that, but I haven't actually seen you do much of it in my life. I mean, I was, it was one of those moments where I was, I was honest, but it was one of those times that I almost felt like, oh my gosh, is this sin to actually say this? But, you know, God knows our heart. And have you ever felt that way? You know, he's able to do something, but you're still struggling with doubt that he'll do it for you. Or you read a prophetic word like the one I just shared and, and your automatic kind of, whether spoken or unspoken response is, man, I hope so. Like you, you have this sigh of, oh, I, I really hope so. You know, like, hey, I've put my faith out there so many times and sometimes he comes through and sometimes it feels like he doesn't. And you just have this sigh of, I, I don't even know. I want to believe, but I'm afraid to get my hopes up. That reminds me of the story in um, Mark 9, where this desperate father comes to Jesus and asks him to heal his son that was having seizures. Um, Some of you, excuse me, will remember, you know, he was telling Jesus he's foaming at the mouth. He's throwing himself down and sometimes he'll be thrown into the fire. And, And in verse 23, Jesus tells him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And the father's immediate response wasn't some religious sounding phrase. He wasn't trying to, you know, sound right. He cried out with tears, completely honest, completely vulnerable and raw and desperate, a desperate father. And he said, I believe, help my unbelief. And Jesus healed his son. You know, we feel that way sometimes, don't we? I believe Lord, but yes, there's a part of me that's still struggling to fully believe. You know, one of the things that I love to do on my podcast is to kick down, demolish those religious walls. I don't want to sound like I have every part of my life is just so, so, um, filled with faith in every part of my life. There's never anything wrong. And, you know, and I don't face difficulties. We all face difficulties, you guys. It's how we respond to difficulties. that makes a difference. And so in my podcast, I want to be real because if I'm not real regarding some of the stuff that I've gone through, 
how am I going to help you with what I've learned about it? So no, I don't need to get into every single itty bitty detail, but I want you to know you're not alone. That sometimes there are still areas that all of us struggle to believe in. And so when the Lord asked me to believe for something that I didn't have the faith for, I was honest and I asked him to help me. I remember telling him that there was so much personal history of suffering in this area. You know, for me, it was a single area, Um, but I had such a history where it seemed to me that I kept suffering in this area and I kept not seeing the answers that I was believing for in this area. And it was actually tainting my faith. I was having a hard time believing him. It doesn't do us any good saying all the right things, quoting all the right scriptures. If our heart isn't convinced, it's better to humble ourselves, confess our doubt and ask him for help. There is nothing wrong with you saying like that father I believe help my unbelief and that day so many years ago the Lord responded to me by telling me that he was going to give me a new history I still remember where I was standing I still remember when he said it and he said that from that point forward he was going to show himself strong on my behalf in this particular area, so that when I looked back years from then, I'd have a history of answered prayer on that subject. And that rocked my world. And it gave me hope and faith that, okay, okay, whatever was in the past is in the past. God was erasing a boundary line of my faith and saying, we're stepping into something different now. And the truth is, the reality is for me, looking back now at the history on this particular subject that I have, I have answered prayer one after the other, after the other, after the other. I now have a history of his faithfulness where I once really felt anyway that I had a history of not seeing the answers that I was looking for on, in this subject. And this is what I'm sensing for you. So many of you want to believe, but you're having trouble. If you will go to the Lord and be honest about your faith on whatever subject you have on your heart right now and ask him to meet you, he will. If we're struggling with faith, it's because we're not fully convinced of his love in every area of our lives. And, and oh, it's a hard one to be completely honest. I know this is a hard one. I know, I know that saying, Hey, if we're doubting, it's because we're not fully convinced of his love. When the Lord first started teaching me about that, I really had a difficult time with that because I was like, no, God, I know you love me. I, I spend time with you in your presence all the time. Like, I know you love me, but yet there was still this little bit of doubt. And he said, that part of you hasn't been saturated in my love. And so, you know, we know perfect love casts out fear, right? So when we're riddled with doubt and fear and faithfulness, it's important to spend time in his love. It's important to ask him to show you something that he wants to show you to say something he wants to say to you. And it isn't a striving, speak to me, I'm pressing in, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, because you are not going to hear or see in that frame of mind. I think I've probably said that a lot of times. I know I say it on social media all the time. When you need to hear from God, unfortunately, it seems like it's the hardest time to hear from him because we get stuck in our head And all we can see are the circumstances and we're not gazing at him. And so that's when we need to slow down and ask him to wash you in his love. You know, and once you find that place of his presence where you're feeling it, you're manifesting it, 
man, I think I said that wrong. You're feeling it and his love is, is very tangible. You feel the, the reality of his love and you find his peace. That's when you're going to be able to go through, you know, step over those eraser, uh, leftovers. Those, what, do, what do we call that? When you erase something, you have all those little eraser pieces, step over that and step into what he's saying. I'm going to purposely make this episode really short, honestly, because sometimes we complicate things or maybe I should say, at least I know I tend to do that, like to dissect every single detail, you know, but God wants us to just step in to just, to just let him step in. He wants to step in. He wants us to step out of the boat and believe again, to keep our eyes on him and not on the waves. But he also wants to step in. You know, he wants to do what only he can do. He said he would erase those boundary lines. It isn't, it isn't you erasing them. It's you just choosing to say, okay, God, I hear that. I accept that let it be according to your word. You know, when we open a door for someone in the natural, someone comes to your house and you open the door for someone to come in, you have to step aside to give them room to walk into your house, right? (coughs) Excuse me. It's the same thing with this. First, you accept the word that he's giving you by opening the door And then you step aside and you invite him to come in. Accept this word. That's you opening the door. Step aside means you know only he can do it. And you invite him. Come on in. Come on in and do this. Do what only you can do. Erase those boundary lines of my faith, God. I'm going to be honest with you about what I believe and what I don't believe. And I ask that you would give me a new history with you so that I can look back and testify of your faithfulness in the areas that I feel like I haven't really seen it. And I have to say this, I'm going to close with this because this is so vitally important. I cannot emphasize how important this is. Over the years, I've learned that when it doesn't seem like he's answering prayer, He most definitely is. It's just that we don't see the big picture. We don't see the big picture. It isn't until we're on the other side of something that we see just some of what he saw. You know, we're so resistant to pain and suffering and for obvious reasons. You know, who likes to hurt? Who likes to get a negative report? Who likes to have opposition? Who likes to lose people they love, who likes to be in physical pain, emotional pain, who likes to um, be rejected or to suffer persecution or to suffer financially. Nobody likes that. Of course not. But I can honestly say now on the other side of so many things that if I had not gone through some of these things, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't have the gold to share with you. We don't like, we don't like these times. We don't like these times where we're like, God, I just need you to come through and I'm trying to believe and it's hard. But I want you to know one more thing. This time right now where you're tempted to doubt, where you're tempted to think, does he even hear me? Does he see me? Is he going to come through? Da, 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 da. When you choose to say, you know what? I don't understand, but I love you. And I offer you my worship. It feels weak and it feels, it feels so tiny right now, but I offer you my love. I offer you my worship. I believe, but help my unbelief. My faith feels really small and I confess that to you, Lord. I want to believe. Please help me. When we offer him all of ourselves, when we surrender every circumstance, when we lay everything down and say, Lord, 
have your way in my life, in my future, in my relationships, in my finances, and just have your way. Have your way. I give you everything, even my right to understand. Something changes, and you will never offer God any of that once you're in heaven. It's here that we get to give him the most beautiful gift the most beautiful gifts. We get to offer ourselves and every area of our lives where we're hesitant, where we're joyful. We get to offer every single part. It is such a beautiful offering to God. He loves this offering that you're giving him. And he is bringing out the gold in you too. Just like he I don't want to say has done in me because he's still doing it. You know, he's refining things. God doesn't give us trials. He doesn't torment us. He doesn't give us sickness. He doesn't make people reject us. He doesn't, he doesn't do those things, but he creates beauty from ashes and he works things out for our good. And what the enemy means for our harm, he turns it around for our good and for his glory. He is strengthening you, friends. He is refining you and, yes, pruning many of you, nipping off those old dry leaves of the past so that you can bloom with beauty. You don't have to carry those dead leaves of fear and and striving and worry and anxiety. And you don't have to carry those dry leaves. He wants you to bloom with beauty. And so unfortunately, that means nipping off some of the past. And I encourage you, lean back into his arms. Offer him every situation. Offer him your love. Offer him your faith, whether it's strong or weak. Give him every situation that's on your heart. And ask him to do what only he can do. To give you a new history with him. And erase the boundary lines of your faith and show himself strong on your behalf. Love you guys. Bye. Thank you for joining me on the Breathing God podcast. If this show has ministered to you, please consider leaving a review right here. And if you think the podcast will bless someone else, please share it. You can find help for anxiety, sign up for my newsletter, and find lots of other goodies on my website, GretchenRodriguez.com.